We are learning a little bit more each and every day about the timeline of the FBI, FBI raid on Mar-a-Lago after the AG Merrick Garland confirmed on Thursday he ordered the search warrant. Sources tell NBC News FBI agents carried out an orderly court approved search from 9 to 6.30 Monday and wore plain clothes, not the blue FBI windbreakers typically associated with a raid. So has this raid bolstered Trump's position to run for president in 2024? It has certainly rallied and angered his base as many Republicans say that this is going to spark a red wave come November. Let's bring back our panel for discussion, Lauren Hubbard, Nathan Magsig. So simply put, um, initial thoughts here about what happened. This is historic no matter where you are in the country. And two, is this problematic for Democrats come November? You know, I don't think so. I, I personally, I don't care if you're a Republican, Democrat, you voted for Ross Perot. Um, the FBI issues a search warrant at the end of an investigation. That's something they start out, we think you might have something. You have to have probable cause in order to go in there. Uh, this is also partnered with the fact that, you know, Trump has been subpoenaed for documents he may have uh, before this raid occurred. So for me, looking at this information, it is the people. We tell everybody every day in America, no one's above the law. This is just another example of that. So I do think that uh, uh, the Republican base is charged up. There will be a red wave. And just to you know, remind all of your viewers what uh, Trump had to endure the four years that he was in office and what he continue, continues to endure, there were endless investigations while he was president of the United States, a lot of accusations that were made, elected officials coming forward saying that they had evidence. He, was, you know, he, he did certain things, uh, whether it was collusion with Russia, making bad phone calls, he was impeached. But at the end of the day, when the information came out and the investigations all settled out, he was guilty of nothing. There was not enough evidence to convict him of anything. So now we have the January 6th hearing, which is taking place. Uh, you, you do see communications between uh, President Trump, former President Trump, as well as the FBI. Mm -hmm. And you have this raid that's taken place this week. So what it's going to come down to is, what did the FBI find? What was in that warrant? And what information do they have? I'm hopeful that Trump will allow uh, that information that he has, that warrant, that information to be released. Do you guys believe the White House and President Biden said they knew nothing about it before it happened? No, I don't believe that. It, it, to your point, you know, he may have been exonerated in the Senate where it was a political trial. This is where we're talking about a, a actual court of justice. So Trump has not been tried in a court of justice, which is what he's dealing with now. To me, what we're looking at here is it may motivate some Republicans to come out, but I think that what we are seeing is uh, gas prices going down. We've seen the Senate pass an inflation uh, act that's coming come due. We saw in Kansas, a conservative state, you know, vote to protect uh, choice. These are all things that are building up to have Democrats right. actually hold on to the, the I want to get to this real quick, though. Valley Congressman Kevin McCarthy issuing basically kind of a threat here to the Attorney General Merrick Garland. We have the tweet, and he posted this on Twitter. Um, and, and there it is right there, uh, posting, when Republicans take back the House, we will conduct immediate oversight of the DOJ, follow the facts, and leave no stone unturned. Attorney General Garland, preserve your documents and clear your calendar. That's a threat. Well, actually, it's a fact. So I'll tell you what, right now, with what's happening with these FBI raids, if there isn't sufficient evidence for these raids to take place on a former president of the United States, what does this mean for a normal citizen who just goes to work every day? Do they now have to fear if they say something that the government doesn't like to hear that they're going to be raided at their own home? So to me, we have a fundamental, uh, there's a fundamental issue here of freedom. And if for whatever reason, if, president, if it's proven that president, president Trump has been singled out and there's no evidence for this, then you know what? People need to be held accountable. And that includes the Attorney General of the United States. Uh, I'm going to respectfully disagree with you on that. I think what we're seeing here is is the very threat of the weaponization of the Justice Department is the very thing that they are upset about themselves. And so to vaguely, to just put out an open threat like that, um, that is the first look step at what the, fascism. Look, at what, the, the, look at what Congress has been doing. Right now, the January 6th hearings about uh, what took place on January 6th. Republicans are on. Well, they and no. The Actually, Kevin McCarthy on. had two individuals he wanted on that committee. The Democrats said no, and they selected the Republicans they wanted on there. So when they talk about transparency, it's not true. At the end of the day, if they believed in transparency, they would have allowed Kevin McCarthy to have 
individuals we on that committee to present new about information. Benghazi, in which Hillary Clinton sat under oath for numerous hours. We can't. When it came down to Kevin McCarthy going into the January 6th committee, he had the opportunity to be on it himself. They did not take the people he wanted to appoint on that committee, and that's a problem. I, I, wanna, I, w I wanted to get into this a little bit longer. We only have a minute left here, guys, but a little closer to home, the L.A. City Council is going to force voters in 2024 to make a decision on how to house the homeless. The solution is use vacant hotel rooms to put homeless people up next to regular guests. Now, hotels have to submit vacancies each by 2 p.m. in the afternoon if it's approved by voters. One, do you think voters will go for it? We know the Olympics are coming in 2028. Uh, is this the way to house the homeless? I think we're going to agree on this one, so I'll let you go. <laughs> so I'll, I'll tell you right now. So one of the things that makes the United States great is we have private property rights. And when government can come in and tell a private property owner how they're going to operate their property, who can stay there, and what the government's going to pay for that to take place, we have a major problem. So this is an initiative that took place. I think there were 126,000 signatures gathered. Yeah. The, the council decided to put this on the ballot. But this right. is bad policy, and voters in Los Angeles should should vote this down. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to agree with that. This is, to me, a failure of, uh, of the system here. Instead of, of using temporary housing and using hotels, when really they should be building more affordable housing. Or and, shelters. Uh, and Well, to your point here, shelters here in Fresno County, how many millions of dollars has Fresno received to address our homeless issue? And we've given money to shelters who aren't sheltering people. Yeah. This, this, this bar to shelter is the problem. We need to build affordable housing, Guys, and we need it now. i got to cut it there. Thank you for the spirited conversation. Lauren Hubbard, Nathan Magzik, appreciate the time.